Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome to the first episode of games I've been playing recently. So in this series, I just want to talk about all the games I've been playing recently and um, what I'm enjoying and what I'm not enjoying and, you know, just, just what I'm doing in my gaming career. So recently me and my girlfriend have been playing a lot of different series. Um, we're really enjoying it playing series in co-op. Uh, the first series we really started playing is Dungeon Defenders. Now, I don't have anything to show for Dungeon Defenders, obviously. <laughs> Fucking put that shit away. But Dungeon Defenders is a digital download version. It's on PS3, Xbox 360, I believe it's on uh, PC, on Steam. Anyway, I own it on PS3 and 360, and we've been playing it on the PS3. So, Dungeon Defenders is a co-op tower defense video game with RPG elements, and it is a ton of fun. It is definitely one of the best co-op games out there. It's four-player co-op, all local or online. Unfortunately, the online server has been shut down for the PlayStation 3. I believe as of this video, or at least as of the last time I played it, the server is still up on the 360. I'm not sure about other platforms, but yeah, just like there's four different characters you can choose from. There is a Huntress character who specializes in bombs and detonation and you know, explosives and stuff like that. There is a wizard, a magician character who de uh, who specializes in uh, magic-based attacks, like, you know, towers, and then he has blockades, he has a bunch of different magic things he can do. Um, there is a knight character who's obviously specializes in, you know, kind of being the tank and fighting close combat and stuff like that. He has a lot of heavy, uh, heavy assault weaponry, like crossbows and spinning turrets and bouncer blockades and all stuff like that and there's also a monk character who specializes in kind of he's kind of like he's the buffer out of everyone he specializes in kind of healing well I wouldn't say healing but I'd say like enhancing other characters attacks and damage and stuff like that healing them and also like slowing and you know doing detrimental stuff to to. He's the red mage of the game, let's just say. So, yeah, I've been playing as the Huntress, and my girlfriend's been playing as the mage, and we've had a ton of fun playing through this. We've played through on easy, on medium. The game's definitely challenging, but you level up your character. You level up your characters, and, um, you know, you just. It's just a heap of fun. Uh, gaining new weapons, gaining new loot. And yeah, just all the different maps. Like tower defense is one of a uh, really a genre that I've been discovering lately, and it's I've had a ton of fun with it. So definitely recommend Dungeon Defenders as a co-op game, or just even I would play this game single player. You can get little familiars that you can have come with you into the battles and stuff like that. Absolute classic of a video game. Uh, really, really good. Uh, Definitely recommend Dungeon Defenders. So kind of playing Dungeon Defenders, we started off, or we kind of got into, you know, playing a heap of co-op games, and the, the, the next game that we went to was Resident Evil 5. This was my first Resident Evil game, and I know a lot of people say that Resident Evil 5 uh, kind of took a step away from the horror elements of the actual Resident Evil series, but in terms of, you know, just really fun action kind of, I wouldn't say it's, it's horror, but it's definitely survival gameplay. It's a, it's a fairly challenging game at certain uh, points in the game, especially depending on what guns you have and limited ammo and stuff like that. It's actually a really, really good game. Uh, really entertaining, whether, you, whether you're a fan of the Resident Evil series or not, I would definitely recommend this one, especially for co-op gameplay. Um, <clears throat> you know, obviously it's a full co-op campaign. And there's different guns that you can collect and you have to scavenge around for, you know, herbs to heal you and different guns are, di are better at taking down enemy, certain types of enemies. There's some really challenging enemies in the game. <laughs> and, um, yeah, like, zombies will swarm you if you're not careful. They'll come from behind, they'll come from all different angles. I personally used the shotgun, that was my weapon of choice, but, like, you quickly run out of ammo. I was, the I was sniping in this game, which is something that typically you don't you know, had the opportunity to do in a lot of survival horror games, but yeah, I was using the sniper and it was working really well. Obviously, I had to watch my back when I was using it, but um, I would say it's a definitely a really solid game. Uh, coming out of Resident Evil 4, uh, I've never played personally, but I've seen my friend play it. It's a very, it's one of his favorite games. I think obviously it lost a lot of the horror aspects, but it definitely built upon the action aspects and 
yeah, just a really addicting game that we just couldn't put down. We played it in only a small handful of playthroughs. And um, by the end of it, obviously I have the Gold Edition here, which has all the DLC. We went through and played the DLC, which is kind of a throwback to the original series. It's in a mansion, stuff like that. Jill Valentine um, and Chris, whatever his name is. And you're going through the mansion, and that actually took on a little bit more of a horror feel. Like, you, I felt like we had really limited ammo, and we were really getting chased by some of these enemies. And then uh, there was another DLC mission with... Um, a bunch of the side characters and Jill Valentine where you basically had to escape and stuff like that and it sort of put it more back to the action but Resident Evil was a really solid game and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I'll probably go back and play through it on insane mode because I'm very masochistic when it comes to my video games. I love playing them on their hardest difficulty and getting my ass kicked. It's all worth it for when you finally beat the game in the end. So the next game that we went on to, the latest one we just finished, is Lord of the Rings War in the North. We played it, it was my second playthrough with this video game. I played co-op with my father beforehand, and back then I played as the Dwarf. There's three playable characters, there's a Dwarf who is, um, an ex again, like a kind of, he has a crossbow and he has explosives, and he's an axe expert and stuff like that. He's the champion, is his, uh, he's his class. There's also an Elf, she is the healer, she has a, a staff or a wand or whatever, and she heals the party, she buffs the party and stuff like that, and, you know, she uses a lot of will, I think she's called the will master actually, and then there's also a ranger who is, uh, he's a human, he's a man, he's the rest of men, and he's very good with his bow and arrow, and he uh, has swords and shields, and he's, he's kind of like your all-rounder character in, in that sort of sense, so... I played as the Dwarf on my first playthrough, but more recently, uh, when I played with my girlfriend, I played as the Willmaster, the Elf, and I really enjoyed being the healer. The first time I played through it, it was very challenging because the healer was the computer, and she was horrible. Like, I'm not saying the AI in this, in this game is bad, but let me tell you, if you're relying on the computer to heal you and buff you, they're almost always down and out, or they're, <laughs> they're never freaking doing what they're supposed to, so playing as the healer, I took it upon myself to heal the party, and we, we had a ton of fun with it. Like. You know, again, it's kind of like an action RPG sort of game. Well, I wouldn't say it's an RPG, but it has RPG elements where there's skill trees you can unlock with all different skills. Uh, and, you know, you can unlock dual wielding with both the ranger and the will master. Uh, dual swords, um, as, um, staff and a sword and stuff like that. And, yeah, there's you can level up different um, attributes with dexterity, strength, stuff like that. It all plays a part in your armor you can wear, or different weapons you can pick up. You need strength to carry them. There's encumbrance elements, um, you know, there's there's potions, and there's crafting, and there's uh, tracking you can do. All different characters. The thing I love about this game is all the different characters have different um, specialties and different things you can do with them, and different areas you can discover that you have to be playing as that character. Which is really cool, and it makes it really good for replayability. So, this War in the North is the best Lord of the Rings video game I've ever played, and I played the two on the PS2, and they were freaking epic. But the way this one, it's not based on anything, it's brand new to the franchise. Obviously, it takes place during the film trilogy, but it's based in the North as opposed to, uh, I believe, Frodo and the Fellowship traveled west, or, or maybe it was south, I'm not really sure, but it takes place in a different environment. Obviously, the Ring Bearer is traveling to Mordor during the campaign, and it just really builds upon it in a fantastic way. It's not at all detrimental to the series. If this was, um, if I obviously didn't know that these are very old books and stuff like that, I would have thought that this would be uh, canon to the considered canon and made by you know the original author or something like that. Like it's really, really solid the way it uses different characters, uh, like Radagast the Brown and stuff like that. Uh, Gandalf's in it. Aragorn's in it. Certain locations are in it, um, and you know they travel into Rivendell and Elrond's in it, and all uh, all the voice actors. None of the original voice actors are back, but all the voice actors do a fairly good job at imitating the characters. And there's all different dialogue choices you can choose um, whenever you're talking to people, and it's just really interesting getting some of the backstory or some of the lore that I didn't know because you know I've read uh, The Hobbit and I've read. Uh, one of the trilogy of the books and I've seen the movies, but this kind of builds upon them in a way that's really interesting and for hardcore fans are really For hardcore fans, I definitely recommend it, but for really anyone I would recommend this. 
a great co-op video game again. I think it might be three player online, don't quote me on that, but even Couch Co-op, it was really, really solid and we enjoyed it thoroughly. The last physical game I have here that we played through is Lego Batman 2. Uh, DC Super Heroes, this has, this is the first Lego game to include full voice acting. It was really, really fun. I forgot how fun the Lego games were, like just going on a Lego romp, breaking everything, collecting everything, rebuilding everything, going through, seeing um, not just Batman characters in Lego form, but also characters from all over the DC universe in Lego form. Um, you know, there's Superman, there's ah, there's people from the Justice League, Wonder Woman, uh, Aquaman, I, I, I didn't see him in it actually. Uh, but there's Green Lantern, Cyborg, and my personal favorite character was the Flash. The speed that he runs at is just crazy. It's freaking awesome. I really enjoyed playing through this game. Um, it wasn't, like, the story missions weren't, like, my favorite. I, I think they're very child-friendly. They weren't... I just... One thing I noticed compared to, like, the Lord of the Rings LEGO game or, or the Star Wars LEGO games, like, they felt, even though um, they're children-friendly, they're all ages, they felt still, like, adult to me in some aspects. This felt like a very dumbed-down, you know, kind of kids game, but at the same time, we had a ton of fun with it, collecting all the different characters and buying all the different vehicles and... After we beat the actual campaign, we spent a ton of hours just running around in the in the open world. You can having flying around as Superman or you know uh, Wonder Woman or whoever you're flying around as is flying at high speeds over Gotham City. It's really just amazing. Like they've really done the series justice. Running around as the Flash, flying around in all the different Batmobiles, the you know the Batwing, and driving around in. Uh, the Batmobile or the Robin's bike or Robin's Batmobile, all these crazy things that are just a fan of Batman would definitely, definitely love this game. So again, another really good co-op game. Now that's the last of the physical games I have. The rest of the games I want to talk about are all download only. So I'm going to include footage where I can, but obviously I don't have any physical versions to show off. So we've been playing Tumblestone. We went through... Tumblestone on the Xbox One, where it's a pretty, like, lengthy game for a download game. Um, it's a puzzle game, and it's actually really fun. We got really addicted to it, and we were just playing it in the morning while eating breakfast, and we were taking turns going back and forth, and there's, like, there's actually a, a great challenge in kind of completing the, completing the puzzles without, you know, making a mistake or something like that, going through and just playing it in one playthrough from start to finish, especially when you get to... I don't know what they're called, like a boss or something, where they stack up and you have to do three, four, five in a row. It gets really challenging, and going into new worlds and playing as different characters keeps it fresh and keeps it interesting. And I just thought I'd mention Tumblestone as a pretty... If you if you like puzzle games, definitely check out Tumblestone. Another um, download game, really great co-op game, four-player co-op, is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. I have this one on PS3. Uh, man, this has turned into the co-op edition, but... Yeah, like, I think this was the very first game I played with my girlfriend, and I've played it before um, with my nephew, and it was like one of the first video games he ever played, but... Yeah, anyway, we play it, and it's kind of just like a side-scrolling beat-em-up, just a classic sort of, um... Like, the graphics are kind of like pixelated or something like that, kind of like a 16-bit game. And it just seems really arcadey, and it seems really fun, easy to pick up and put down. Uh, like I said before, four-player co-op, you can pick up different weapons and beat the hell out of people with whatever you want. Uh, you know, we were picking up baseball bats and trash cans and, you know, snowballs and all sorts of things. Where You can pick up people and bash people with people. <laughs> it's just a ton of crazy fun over the top and I, I love beat-em-ups and nowadays I think like new beat-em-ups are few and far in between and I'd love to see more games like this come out. Um, but yeah, really great co-op game. So, um, what happened was I, my girlfriend had some spare time and I introduced her to Magic the Gathering. I put on Magic 2014. This is, these are my Magic card sets, but yeah, I put on Magic 2014. And if you're not aware what Magic is, Magic is one of the oldest, um, you know, competitive card games that there is. It's based in high fantasy and fantasy and high lore and stuff like that, um, of planeswalkers and there's all different, different like types of decks that you can use. There's five or six colors or something like that. And yeah, just 
depending on whatever colored deck you choose, you have different elements to your deck and uh, certain play styles are, you know, more, more preferred for certain decks. For example, if you play as a red deck, um, you start off very aggressive and you come out very strong, but you sort of, by the end of it, trail off, you sort of burn out, um, pun intended. So if you play as a green deck, it's all about starting off small, but uh, building up and stuff like that. Like it's the deck of the forest and the deck of um, nature and animals and stuff like that if you start off small. But as you go on, you grow bigger and bigger and bigger and it becomes almost overwhelming if you let a green deck um, get to any certain size. Really, you can't quell it by the end of it. If you play as a white deck, you uh, you play very much in um, about honor and justice and stuff like that and you play a lot of angels and a lot of humans and you're kind of banding together for the greater good and it's all... Uh, you know, based on fair play and stuff like that. It's about gaining life and, you know, banding together, <laughs> helping each other. White is my personal favorite. Black is another favorite of mine, which is all about, like, dirty tactics and stealing life off other people, vampirism, and, you know, demons and devils and zombies and ghouls and ghosts and all the underworld and the filthy sort of stuff like that. And blue is based on illusionary magic and kind of just messing with your enemy, um, making them pick up the card they just put down and kind of casting illusions and casting spells and a lot of sorcery and stuff like that. So there's all different, you know, type of ways you can play Magic. Magic's a fantastic um, game. And I would think that anyone, if they were really interested in it... That is all asshole. <laughs> do you want to you wanna be in the video with me? Hmm? Do you want to help me? Do you want to be my co-host? What games have you been playing recently? Sit down. Chris is going to sit there. Are you going to sit? Anyway, so um, she's been playing Magic the Gathering and she loves it. Like, I can attest for her that she is addicted to it. I really um, got her involved in that. So, Chris has stolen the show. Another game we played is Killer Instinct. Uh, Killer Instinct Classic is freaking awesome. Like, it's one of my... It's the first... It's on the Xbox One. It's a port from the original arcade. And, um... Yeah, like, it was just a crazy fighting game. A really old school one. And we had a ton of fun playing it, me and my girlfriend. Taking turns, beating the arcade boss and battles and stuff like that. <laughs> And, um, yeah, it was just freaking awesome. I don't know what you want to watch. You want to watch the gameplay on my cat because she seems to have stolen the show. Anyway, Killer Instinct, um, we ended up beating the game. The boss was hard as shit. He was the most, it was one of the most challenging bosses I've played in a while. Um, as I said in previous videos, I love fighting games and we loved playing Killer Instinct Classic. We ended up beating the boss with the skeleton character, but we used all the characters. We used a bunch of continues and yeah, just freaking great game. Two games left. This one I can't include any gameplay because I played it on the iOS. However, um, it's been it's available. Oh, maybe I can include gameplay actually. Anyway, I, w whether I do or not, you'll have to find out. It was originally started off as a Flash game. It's been ported to iOS and following that, ported to Steam. I started playing Kingdom Rush. It's a tower defense game, and let me tell you, I am addicted to Kingdom Rush. It's one of my favorite. Uh, it's one of my favorite friggin' tower defense games ever, and. It's just so much depth to it, so much challenge, even now. Um, I beat the game, but I seriously am stuck. Like, I, I can't get past certain levels, especially with three stars, and there's bonus heroic missions and challenges. Basically, yeah, you just, there's four different types of towers, and it's just your standard tower, tower defense game, but it is amazing. It's so addicting. I actually got my girlfriend on this one as well. Highly recommend Kingdom Rush. I, I bought it on uh, iOS. There's a, there's a free-to-play version on their website, uh, the Flash version, I'll leave a link, I'll leave an annotation, and um, it's also on Steam, so definitely check out Kingdom Rush if you haven't already. Look up some reviews, look up some gameplays or anything like that. It's it's just like an amazing game, and I, wanna, I want everyone to know about this game. It's really become one of my favorite games, probably like one of my favorite games that I played this year, and it's an indie title. It's absolutely amazing. So, the final game I want to talk about is the game that I've put the most hours into. I've been playing it for months now, honestly, but I'm still playing it, so I had to mention I've been playing Warhammer 40,000 Dawn of War. This is the first of the real-time strategy video games in the Dawn of War series. It's based, obviously, on the Warhammer 40k 
tabletop series and it just fleshes out all the different, uh, you know, all the different, uh, what do you call it, infantry units and all the different vehicles and, and all the different races and just fleshes it out so much it really brings it to life. I can't say that I've really been as absorbed into a game like this, into the universe for a long time and it's like as corny as the voice acting and as the dialogue and as just the whole world of Warhammer is. Like it's one just big, everyone's freaking dying and every, it's just crazy. As crazy as it is, it's freaking awesome. I loved it. It's not my first, um, you know, it's not my introduction to the Warhammer uh, franchise back in the day, and I, I have to show these off. These are actually pretty embarrassing. Back in the day, I had, I had tabletop figures. Uh, I never, never played, but I had a bunch of different Warhammer figures. This, the, the race I chose to be my favorite, just like in the game, I was, the, I was the Space Marines, and uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get these on the shop, but. Let me just get a few out. These, I apologize for how bad these paint jobs are because I had these literally, I was under 10. I was freaking young as young. And these guys, uh, they're, you know, they're tiny and they're, they're the Space Marines. I don't know, they're black and white. Uh, that's just the color I wanted them to be. I had a bunch of these, like a whole different amount of units. There's a, uh, it's not going to focus on it. Let me out of the shot. It's not going to focus on it, but that's a, a bike or whatever. Uh, he's not fully painted anyway. You know, here's my paint set or whatever. All the different paints I had, like Chaos Black. I guess I was, that's what I was painting them. Shining Gold. Oh, I must have, my parents must have spent a ton of money into these. Elf Flesh. You know. Um, I'm just going to get a few more out and show you guys. There's some other ones there, so yeah. Anyway, I used to have Space Marines back in the day, and I love playing as the Space Marines in Dawn of War. The campaign, the, the first campaign in the first game was amazing. I loved uh, all the different, you know, units and all the different commands you can do. It was really just instantly became my favorite real-time strategy game. And, um, you know, all the, all the other races are really interesting as well. I love how there's different ways you can play and, like, Coming from, in terms of real-time strategy games, all I played was uh, Age of Empires. That's all I played. And so I went into this, like, really kind of the new... Like, it's not new now, but it's kind of like, to me, it's really what defines the RTSs now. And it's it's freaking amazing. I played so far... I got all of them. I got the, the Game of the Year edition with all of the expansions. And um, I love how you can zoom in and out and really see the characters you're using. So I played through the whole campaign of the first one, I played through the Winter Assault campaign, which in the first game there's Orcs, there's Eldar, there's uh, Space Marines, Chaos Marines, and I think that might be it. And then the second game it introduces um, the Imperial Guard, which is in the first game as allies, but this game they kind of take on their own thing, and that's in Winter Assault, that's in the, the DLC. And then there's also Necrons at the end of that. I played through the whole campaign of that, of Winter Assault. And now I'm playing the Dark Crusade, which is kind of like a... Uh, uh, a conquest type game. You choose your race and you're trying to take over all the different uh, territories of the planet and stuff like that. I think like Dynasty Warriors Empires or something like that. And yeah, I played through that with the Space Marines. Freaking loved it. Had, excuse me, updates to the playstyle, updates to the... Uh, you know, the new units and stuff like that, the Grey Knights are included, and now I'm playing through my second playthrough as the Orcs, and I am loving it. This Dark Crusade introduced the Tau Empire, and the Necrons is fully playable race. There's also one after that, I think it's called Soulstone or Soulstorm, and I can't wait to keep playing uh, Dawn of War. Seriously, I am in love with this game. <laughs> it's amazing. Anyway, I was just saying my camera's about to die, and it died as I said it, so, um... I better wrap up this video while I still can, the daylight's fading. Uh, that's my first episode of games I played recently. Thank you for watching this video, and as always, leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more gaming and anime content, and I'll see you guys in the next episode of games I'm playing recently. Take care, guys.